This is a story about a Kelpie. Kelpies are the water horses that live in, this, in the Scottish lochs, and they're very violent and dangerous creatures. They're also quite bitter and angry as well. Some people say this is because they were originally the horses of the fairy folk, but when the fairy folk went west long ago to live in Ternanog, they abandoned their horses and left them in Scotland and they had nowhere to live but in the lochs, and they've been bitter and resentful about that ever since. I don't know if that's true or not. No one knows for sure what kelpies are like when they're deep in the lochs, but when they're up on the shore, they look like pleasant, friendly, beautiful, amenable horses with beautiful silver bridles, which are just the kind of thing that a weary traveller would like to ride on. But if ever you get on the back of a kelpie, it will gallop with you back to the loch, take you deep under the water, drown you, and eat you. And you find, once you're on the kelpie, you cannot get off, you're stuck. In fact, if you just stroke or pat a kelpie, your hand will stick to it, and it will drag you down to the water. There are stories of children who stroke the nice horsey who had to cut their own fingers off to escape from being drowned. Now the Kelpie are part of the fairy folk, so they're immortal uh, and they're very powerful, though the power of the Kelpie is in the silver bridle. If you can take the bridle off, it will turn to an ordinary horse, but it's difficult to take, to take the bridle off a wild horse. And um, being immortal and powerful, uh, they're fairly stupid. This story is about a Kelpie that lived in Loch Andun, on the island of Barra in the Western Islands. He'd been there for hundreds of years, and although the lifestyle of a Kelpie is quite nutritious, it's not very fulfilling and he felt the need for something else which he thought could be supplied if he had a wife. And being a Kelpie and powerful, he thought the way to get a wife was just to take one. Being Kelpie and being a bit stupid, he thought the best kind of wife would be the prettiest one. And being a Kelpie and being selfish and angry, he felt he should do whatever he wanted. So he watched the people of the island. Now there was a young woman on the island who was the prettiest girl on the island, which is always a dangerous thing to be. And she was also the cleverest, which helps a bit with the danger. She was a fine singer, and she was good at knitting. And one fine summer afternoon, she was sitting on the shores of the loch, knitting a warm woolen shawl for her for the coming winter. And she realised that a horse had come up behind her, a fine, friendly, gentle horse. And although she was clever, she wasn't very wary. So when the horse nuzzled up to her, she reached out to stroke it without thinking. And her hand stuck fast. And she thought, oh, this is a Kelpie, and I'm doomed. But instead of dragging her into the water, the Kelpie turned into a young man but still kept fast hold of her. He was a fine-looking young man, but his face was full of anger and violence. And he said to her, You will be my wife and come with me and live in the bottom of the loch under the water. To give herself a bit of time to think, she said, Yes, I could do that, but I know it's very cold down in the loch, uh, and I would perish unless I had a warm shawl to keep me warm. And that's just what I'm knitting at the moment, and I'm nearly finished. So if you can wait half an hour or so till I finish the shawl, then we can go together. And the Kelpie, being a bit stupid, agreed to this. So she sat down to knit, and the Kelpie lay down and laid his head in her lap so she couldn't run away. And also because it was a pleasant place to lay his head. So she sang and she knitted and she knitted and she sang and she sang the gentle love songs and the lullabies and pretty soon on the warm afternoon 
the Kelpie was asleep. And she looked down, and she saw that he had a long silver chain round his neck. And she thought, that must be the Kelpie bridle, now he's changed to a man. So she reached down very gently and pulled it off. And once she did that, the Kelpie lost his Kelpie power and turned back into an ordinary horse, a fine strong horse. And he had no power anymore. In fact, since she'd got the chain, she'd got the Kelpie bridle, she had power over him. So she took him back to the farm and said to her father, put a cow's halter on this. Don't put a bridle on him. Put him in the barn and I shall go to see the old man to ask what we should do. Now there was an old man on the island, an old man with second sight, who gave wise advice to all the people there. Many old men have second sight, or at least see further than most, and they're full of wise advice for other people. Not all old women believe this, but some young people do, so that's all right. So she went to the old man of the island and told him the story about how she'd captured the Kelpie and asked what she should do. And he said, well, put the horse to work on the farm, but feed him well and treat him kindly. And when you hear the first cuckoo sing in the spring, bring him back here and we shall see what we shall see. Now, it was high summer, so the first cuckoo would be in nearly, an, nearly a year's time. But she went back to the farm, and she and her father put the horse to work. Well, being a Kelpie horse, it was quite fractious and difficult and uncooperative to start with. But she treated it well. Every night when it came back, she would feed it well, she would groom it. And she would sing to it and talk to him about the things that happened on the island, the births and the deaths, the marriages and the partings, the quarrels and the reconciliations, uh, the successes and the failures, the parties and the Cayleys. And each night before she left, she would take his head in his hands and breathe in his nostrils so he could share the breath of mortal life. As the year went on, the horse got less awkward and a bond developed between the woman and the horse. And she used to ride him to the fields, and ride him back in the evenings. And then one day she heard the first cuckoo and she thought, it's time. So the next day she groomed the horse, put the silver chain in her pocket and went off to see the old man. And when they got there, the old man said, put the chain round his neck. And she said, but if I do that, he'll get his Kelpie power back and we'll all be in trouble. Put the chain round his neck, the old man said, and we shall see what we shall see. So that's what she did. When she did that, the horse turned back into the young man again. Still fine looking and in fact stronger and fitter looking as a result of her years working on the farm. And now he didn't look so angry. He looked calm and placid. And the old man said to him, You've been working with us for a year nearly. What have you learnt? And the Kelpie man said, I've learnt about kindness. I've learnt about the life of mortals on the island about successes and failures, about hopes and fears, about loss and gain, about sorrow and joy. And I've learnt a lot of good songs from the singing of the girl. So, said the old man, you have a choice. You can go back to being a Kelpie and live in the loch like you were before, or you can give that up and you can become a mortal man and live with us here on the island. So what do you choose? 
And the Kelpie man looked at the young woman and said, If I asked you, if you would, if I became a man, if you would choose to live with me, would you choose to do that? And the young woman said, yes, I would. So the Kelpie man took the chain from round his neck, put it round the young woman's neck and said, I choose to become a mortal man. And so he lived there for many years on the island with a woman and they died as people should. And that was all a long time ago. But now, if you go to Barra and you want to see Loch and Dime, if you go to North Bay and take the road up the hill between the big poly tunnel and Barra car hire, you'll get there. And uh, you can sit on the loch side and it doesn't matter how beautiful you are, how clever, how well you sing, or even if you can knit, you'll be quite safe because there is no longer a Kelpie in Loch Andyme. And that's it all. <laughs>